called you to lead us. Are you going to say, oh, you, oh, you already got good enough. You already got your thing on. I should have known when I saw a leader walk up <laughs> that the soloist had already been designated. All right. After a leader sings this solo, then we will hear God's proclaimer, Reverend Davis. Let us say amen. storms of life are raging stand by me when the storms of life are raging stand upon upon the sea thou who rulest wind and water stand by me in the midst of faults and failures stand by me in the midst of faults and failures stand by me when And my friends misunderstand Thou who knowest all about me Please stand by me When I'm growing old and feeble Stand by me when I'm growing old and feeble. Lord, stand, stand by me when my life becomes a burden. And I'm nearing chilly Jordan. Oh, thou lily of the valley, stand, stand by me. In the midst of tribulations, Stand by me in the midst of tribulations. Stand by me when the host of hell assails. And my strength, I know it's going to fail. 
Thou who never, you never lost a battle. Please, please, Lord, just stand by, stand by me. Thank you, Leader and Sharon. This is a faithful saying, worthy of all acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am the chief. To Reverend Bonner, to my fellow Yoke men in the gospel on the roster to the deacons and mothers and my brothers and sisters in Christ. I thank God for another opportunity to stand before you today to, to try to share with you a portion of God's word. So if you would, would you turn to, in your Bibles to 2 Timothy chapter 1. Verses 7 through 12. Second Timothy, chapter 1, verses 7 through 12. And it reads, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner. But be thou partakers of the affliction of the gospel according to the power of God who saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began, but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who have abolished death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, unto which I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles, for which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I, I, nevertheless, I am not ashamed, because I know whom I have believed, and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Amen. I would just like to share with you the thought, I know whom I have believed. In his second letter to Timothy, we have before us the last known words of the Apostle Paul. It is his will and last testament. It is his last instruction to his favorite disciple, Timothy, and through Timothy to us, the church. It was written in full consciousness that Paul, when he wrote this letter, that his life in this world was just about over and that it would end by a, a violent and cruel death, a Roman Paul prison. Paul had been sentenced to death by the emperor Nero, and it was just a matter of time before he would be beheaded. But in spite of this, 
The Apostle Paul encourages Timothy, reminding him that God has not given them a spirit of fear. That is a spirit of cowardness. He, for the time will come that Timothy will have to stand for the word of God and that he would have to endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Oh, we want the blessings of Jesus Christ, but we don't want to stand for Jesus Christ. We'll sing the song, All I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. First time the, the, uh, the enemy shows up, the, uh, uh, the fight break out, we all break and run. We, we be AWOL instead of on the battlefield like we claim we are. So Paul was telling Timothy that first of all, that Timothy, he had a responsibility. That first of all, he had to study to show himself approved unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, and that all scripture is given for inspiration by inspiration of God, that it is God-breathed, and that it is profitable for doctrine, which is teaching, reproof, correction, for instruction, in righteousness that the man and that the woman of God may be perfect, that is mature, and thoroughly furnished unto good work. We need to study and rightly divide the word of truth. The word of God is very important. We go out and then not rightly dividing the word of God, and then, and, and then we are doing damage to the people that we feeding it to. Yeah. The word of God is just like a, a fine seven-course meal. But we'll take it and throw it all in the pot together and make goulash out of it. We'll take what was meant to the nation Israel and try to apply it to the church. We, we take the promises that, that, that God has given the church and try to give it to Israel. We need to rightly divide the word. Don't you know you can't eat everybody cooking? You can't eat everybody cooking. My wife would tell you I don't eat everybody cooking. And I had to check her out a long time before I would eat hers. So, 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 it is important, it is important that we rightly divide the word of truth. Don't you know God looks at three classes of people in Scripture? He, he looks at, he looks at Israel, he looks at the church, and he looks at the Gentile. Israel are the descendants of the 12 tribes of the 12 sons of Jacob. The church is composed of believing Jews and Gentiles in Christ Jesus. And the Gentile is simply anybody that's not a Jew. So we need to rightly divide the word. I know whom I have believed. Paul also charged Timothy before God in the Lord Jesus Christ, who should judge the living and the dead, to preach the word, to be diligent in season and out of season. He said, why? Because the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust, they will heap to themselves. Teachers with having itching ears. They just want somebody to, to tickle their ears to make them feel good. Don't tell me about the wages of sin is death. Don't tell me what the word of God says. Be not deceived. 
God is not marred. For whether a man sow, that shall he weep. Be not to see that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. That no drunkard, no fornicator, no homemaker, no thief, no robber, no lovers of their own self. No, 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 lovers, men, loving men and women, loving women. He say, such were some of you, but we have been watched. So the Bible teaches that any man who in Christ, he is a new creation. Some of those things that I just named, you could have wrote Kenneth Davis right beside each one of them. But don't you know I have been delivered? Not looking to go back, but just being honest, daring to, to tell where I done came from. Everybody up in here, if the truth be known, your name was right there with mine. So, 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 so we have to do what? We have to preach the word. They don't want to hear it. I didn't want to hear it. I used to sit right over there in that corner. And, 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 and Reverend Barry would be preaching. I'd be sitting there getting mad. I said, that Negro talking about me. You know. But it was the truth. He wasn't thinking about me, but it was the word of God that was cutting me all the way to the bone. So Paul, he encourages Timothy to be alert, to endure affliction, to do the work of an evangelist. An evangelist is simply one that gives the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what evangelist See, because Paul said, look, my departure is at hand. He said, now I'm ready. He said, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. And henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me on that day. And not only me, but all those who love his appearance. All we talk about, oh, how I love Jesus, and, but, but, but we ain't ready for Jesus to come back yet. Because there's still some things that we still love and want to do on this earth. But our ambition should be Please come now, Lord Jesus. Not as one who is defeated by the, by the troubles of this world, but, but to go where our heart is. It says, if ye did be risen with Christ, set your affection on things above and not on things of this earth. What Christ who is your life? Is Jesus your life? Or, 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 or is there Jesus that's someone that you talk about uh, once every seven days for two or three hours? And then after that, you, you're going back to your regular yeah. business. We should love his appearance. I know in whom I have believed. To know is to be certain to be sure, to apprehend, to realize, to discern, to be positive, to be confident, to have no doubt, to feel certain, sure. to, to have knowledge, to have information about, yeah. to be informed, to, re to recognize and to perceive, perceive. Knowledge is power. That is why 
it is very important for us as people. It is very important for us as black people to know our history. Don't you know it was illegal? It was illegal for a blacks to get an education. You know why? Because knowledge is power. So we need to know where we came from. We need to know that we are more than just a bunch of buffoons and idiots. We need to know that it's more to our women just twerking in bootylicious. We need to know that our young men, we walk around with, 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 with our pants like that. We need to know that there were men and women that stood up, that endured, that suffered all type of indig indignities against all lies. So what? So that we can make it. I'm going to say this. During Black History Month, we run into so many different voices, and, and I understand, I understand that in a lot of times that, that, that there's a lot of resentment and anger goes out. We got some brothers and sisters that'll say, well, y'all so-called Christian, you know, you know, y'all never would, and, and y'all talking about this Jesus, this blonde-haired, blue-eyed Jesus, you know, and, 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 then, and then if the slave masters hadn't have brought you over here, you never would have known anything about this so-called Jesus of y'all. Well, they have never really read the Bible. That used to be my opinion in my conversation, too. I said, I said that the Bible was nothing but the white man's tool to enslave the world. First, he, he'll send in the Bibles and the missionaries and teach you how to turn the other cheek, and after that, he'll send the army in to, to take your resources. Now, now I'm going to tell you all the truth. A lot of y'all done heard this story. I said I, I was standing on the corner. I was standing on the corner Sunday night, lively at Newstead, me and my buddy. I had, I had a, lid, a, a lid of weed in my pocket, a joint in my hand, and, and a fifth of bougie in the other hand. And the subject of religion came up. <laughs> and me and my big mouth. You, be, you, you, you better not say what, what you ain't going to be, what you ain't going to do. I said, well, you know, all them old folks up there in church, they ain't doing it but cramming for the final. You know, I said, a preacher, I said, preacher ain't nothing but a $2 pimp. All they he doing is getting them old ladies last $2. All thing they doing is passing. It's passing the plate around in the church three, four times during the service. And I said, ain't no one in the world. I'd be a low down, no good preacher. See, see you, you better learn how to keep your mouth shut. <laughs> then one day, then one day, I finally read the Bible for myself. One day I met God for myself. See, because if you open up this Bible, it ain't about white, it ain't about black, it ain't about Chinese, it ain't about Russian. The Bible say that the whole world is guilty before a holy God. And that Jesus, he came to die for all men. Now, back to us getting over here in America. I'm going to move on. It says that it reminded me of how that the story of Joseph and his brothers. Y'all know the story. How that his brothers was jealous of Joseph. And, and that how that they sold him off into slavery. But in the end, to make a long story short, God had him in a position where that he was able 
to help his brothers, the very one. Joseph told him in the end that you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. Well, we, we over here. Though they might have meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. You understand what I'm talking about? We know Jesus Christ. That's the main thing. And then I'm, I'm going to say this, I'm going to move. But then if you think about it, Philip met an Ethiopian eunuch. Philip gave the gospel to the Ethiopian eunuch who, who was a, 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 he overseed Candace, the queen of Ethiopia. So the message did go down. So now let's just move on. But so, so we need to know. We need to know our history, okay? Now, it says that knowledge is power. And so we need to know who we believe. Not only in our life every day, but we need to have spiritual knowledge. Don't you know it is very important that we know who we believe? Some of us will say, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, 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 I believe there's a God. I believe in a higher being, big deal. They, they, they ain't nothing. Even the demons uh, believe and tremble. But see, but we need to know in whom we have believed. A lot of us preachers, I, I, I'm going to say this. A lot of us preachers, we are at fault. We are guilty. We've been slowful, lazy, uh, uh, shucking and jiving preachers. We ain't taught our people nothing. Some of our people is, 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 is biblically, biblically illiterate. Some of them is dumb as a box of rocks when it comes to about the scriptures. Be in church every Sunday. We ain't did nothing but put on the show for them. We ain't did nothing but, 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 but schemed on them. Took their money. We, they been, we been bamboozled. They been hoodwinked. We ain't did our job. We supposed to feed God's sheep. Jesus, Jesus say, feed my sheep. He told Peter, he say, Peter, love us not me. Peter say, Lord, you know I do. He say, feed my sheep. Peter, love us thou me. He say, Lord, well, you know, Lord, you know I do. He say, feed my lamb. He say, Peter, love us thou me. He say, feed my sheep. So many times we look at our society of the day. People been eating, eating, eating. And you know what they've been eating? They've been eating junk food. Junk food. We got obesity and, old, and, 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 and uh, diabetes running rapid because they've been eating junk food. We need to feed our people a wholesome meal. Yeah. Yeah. Half the Christians can't tell you how you get saved. Well, I want to get baptized. Baptism, there's no salvation. In, in, in baptism. Like they say, you go down a, 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 a dry center, I mean, and come up a wet center. But it's only salvation through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul said, I know, I know whom I believe. The idea of what Paul is talking about, that he knew and understood and trusted the character Jesus and the person, Christ. the Redeemer, the Savior, the Lord, and that he had a personal relationship with him. I know whom I have believed. He had a personal, y'all hear me, a personal relationship yeah. with him. I remember years ago when, when I, 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 they used to have parties. Friends of mine said, hey, 
Come on, get him, man. We going over here. They so and so, so and so ha having a party. I say, man, I'm, I don't know them folks. Come on, man. I know them. You, you can go with me. And a lot of times, a couple of times I went there, they wouldn't let me in because they say, I know him, but I don't know you. And you can't get in. <laughs> See, not just because that other guy knew him. Y'all understand where I'm going? Just because your wife, your grandmama, or, 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 or your mama knew Jesus, that ain't going to get you in. Huh? You got to know Jesus for yourself. You got to know him. And so now, spiritual knowledge of Jesus is necessary to have faith in him. How can you have faith in somebody that you don't know? The word of God says faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And, can, and how can they hear without a preacher? Preachers, we ain't selling no prosperity plan. We ain't pushing no seed where you can put it in the field and get a harvest. Preachers, we need to tell them about the bloodstained banner of Jesus Christ. Just think about how many sermons do you hear nowadays where they go to the cross. Yeah, yeah. Woe is me if I do not preach the cross. For the preaching of the cross is foolishness to them that pray, but to us who are saved, it is the power of God unto salvation. I can give you all the positive thinking things in the world. You can go down to Zig Ziglar, Art Corny, classes and all that and think positive. And you'll be a positive-minded person right in hell. You need the blood of Jesus Christ. Don't you know that the more that we studied about Christ, the more we know of him. And the more we know of him, the strongly we believe in him. As we go through this life, and we can look back and realize that it wasn't nobody but the Lord. It wasn't because about no luck. It wasn't because of our ingenuity, our brain. It wasn't because who we know. But if we be real with ourselves, it was the Lord that brought us through. I can tell y'all that's how I know, just from my own personal experience, that, that I know that it was nobody but Jesus. I should have been dead and stinking a long time ago. But it's because of God's mercy. And I realized it was because of God's mercy. Through dangers seen and unseen. I know that. Some of the brothers up in here, some of the brothers up in here, they've been off to war. they seen people. Blown apart. They seen people die. They seen people come back maimed. They seen people come back shell shot, crazy. I know it was the Lord that brought me through. Not a scratch on me. Now I came back crazy, but 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 I wasn't wounded, you know. But so I know friends and relatives, acquaintances of mine that I started off with, they dead and gone. Same age I am or younger. It wasn't because I wasn't out there in the mix with them. Some of them went to the penitentiary. A lot of them end up drug addicts. It wasn't because I wasn't out there in the mix with them. But it was God. It was God that stirred me and kept me. So we must believe in the Lord Jesus. Well, how do we get to know the Lord Jesus? It says that, the Bible tells us that 
Faith come by hearing and the hearing by the word of God. That we, as individuals, that we need to take time to study God's word. This hour and a half or two hours here on Sunday, that is not no study. You can't ask no questions. You, 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 you can't get into it. But see, but, but God's word, the more we learn about God's word, God's word manifests God's love towards us. For it is manifested in the word of God. It is declared in the word of God that God loved us so that he sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Here in his love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and he sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. That word propitiation means the, the total satisfaction for our sins. For our sins present, for our sins past, present, or future. Jesus paid it all. He paid it all. I know whom I believe. Well, let me tell you about who I believe. Who the one that I believe. Hmm. Where, where should I start? Well, let's start in the beginning. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. And, and, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among men. And his name was Jesus. I know whom and I believe. Jesus said, Search the scriptures, for in them you think ye have eternal life, but they are which testify of me. Search the scriptures. Well, in Genesis, third chapter of Genesis, Jesus said that the scriptures testify of him. In the third chapter of Genesis, he was the seed of the woman that, that was going to bruise the head of the serpent. In the eighth chapter, the seventh, eighth chapter of Genesis, he was the ark that saved Noah and his family from the flood. There is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. In Exodus, he was the lamb without spot or blemish that they took the blood and that they put it on the, on the doorpost and the lentils. He was that bread from heaven in the wilderness. He was that living rock, water in the desert. In Psalms, he was the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. In Isaiah, he was the servant of the Lord who vanished was more and more than any man. Why? Because he bore our grief and carried our sorrow. Yet did we esteem him stricken and smitten of God. Why? Because he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. And the chastisement for our peace was upon him. In the New Testament, John said, Behold, the Lamb of God that take away the sins of the world. In, in Mark, Matthew, in Luke, and John, he was the one that they beat all the way up to a hill called Calvary. He was the one that they nailed. They, they nailed his hands and his feet. He was the one who said, Father, forgive them, for I know not what they do. He was the one that they laughed at. You saved others, come on down and save yourself. No, but he would not come down. You know why? Because he was dying for you and for me. 
He would not come down. I know whom I have believed. He was the one that they took down after they stabbed him in his side and water and blood rushed out and that they wrapped him and they put him in a borrowed tomb and he stayed there three days. He was the one that got up and said all power in heaven and in, in earth is delivered in my hand. I know whom I have believed. But it didn't stop there. For in the book of Acts, he's the one where the disciples were standing out on the Mount of Olives and they watched Jesus as he was taken up into the air. And the angel said to them, O oh, ye men of Galilee, why are you stand there gazing up into the air? For this same Jesus that you see ascending up, he going to come back again. I know who I have believed. My Jesus, he's alive today. My Jesus, he's there. He can save to the uttermost. You know why? Because he can make intercession for me and for you. Do you know Jesus? Do you know him for yourself? I ain't talking about the Jesus that grandma knew. I'm talking about your Jesus. This got to be a personal relationship. A personal relationship. I know, but do you know? Do we know? Do we know who Jesus is? I ain't talking about no slot machine, Jesus. I'm talking about the, the, the one that, that, that died so that we might have life. I know whom I have believed. is open. Is somebody here that might not know Jesus Christ. You might know of him. You might heard of him. But do you know him for yourself? Jesus say, I stand at the door. That is the door of your heart and not. And if any man let me in, I will come in and so. Right. The door is open. 